What's going on, everybody? Hey, today we got episode 48 of Putting You in Your Place. Uh, Derek Nallen had some things come up. He had to he had to back out of the show today, so I'm disappointed uh, that we couldn't have him. Derek, you're welcome anytime. I want to open the show just with a message to Derek. Um, Derek, uh, you have um, great talent. I think you... Um, you don't give yourself enough credit, I think. I think there's some things holding you back. I'm not. I'm not aware of. Um, it feels like. It feels like there's some. There's just some emotions there. I would have. I. I, I want to talk out with you. I want. I want to be an endless source of encouragement to you. I want the New River Valley. Anybody that's hearing this right now, encourage this guy. He. He's very talented. He can make this thing happen for himself. He needs um, our support. He needs our support to continue to encourage him and uplift him and and um, you know, just to kind of get him started. I feel like if he gets started, then it'll be a great thing. It'll be something that, um, that does exactly what he wants in his life. So, Derek, um, you're welcome here anytime. You, uh, in my opinion, are somebody that could have a great impact on our local community. You would have great influence, uh, and I think you could provide a great life for yourself um, in this capacity. So um, so there's my word to Derek. Derek, uh, so I hope everything gets squared away with whatever issues came up that you couldn't be here. So, um, All right, so today, today we're going to dive into something that we've been planning, you know, because we have rainy day situations like this, right? So um, things happen, life happens. We got to be prepared for somebody canceling at the last second. So today we're going to talk about my dream list of guests that I want on moving forward here. You know, we're two weeks from going on break. So if we're two weeks going on break. We're going to, we're going to have a new look when we get back. We're going to have, we're going to have some new things, some new aesthetics here. It's going to kind of look different. So, so get ready for that. Don't be too thrown from that. I know when I see a lot of change in things, it kind of throws me off for a second. So I'm just going to kind of get you guys prepared for that. Like the angles are going to change. The the aesthetics are going to change. My guys have got some great plans to make this thing look better, sound better. Uh, you know, there's a shadow on my hat. I like to wear a hat. And there's a shadow on my hat we want to kind of get rid of. We want to have, we want to have the ability to have four people in the room and have every camera angle hit right. So, so we're going to be – we're in development. So two shows from now, we're going to take about a month break. And we're going to change some things up that are going to further enhance our show. So we're excited about that. Uh, and we're not going to leave you hanging. We got some content. We got some content to fill in the gaps there for the month that we're off. We're going to do some reruns. We're going to do some best ofs. So just get ready for that. And uh, again, appreciate all the support, uh, the comments, the engagement. Um, going over to YouTube and helping us there. You know, that's where we're really focused is trying to grow our subscriber count on YouTube and you guys have come through for us. We're, you know, around the 263 mark, you know, we want to get to this thousand dollar uh, thousand subscriber mark, um, there so we can pop this bottle, uh, that new river engraving, the, the new river engraving guys gave us, uh, to celebrate when that time comes. So please help us out there. Uh, if you're watching on Facebook, uh, consider at some point next time you bring YouTube up, go over to our page, just search Scott Bunn on YouTube and hit the subscribe button there. Um, so let's just get into like what I hope to uh, accomplish and who I hope to bring in here as we come back from break. Some very compelling people in the New River Valley here that, that I want on. And I want to speak it. I want to talk about them. I want to talk about what they mean to me or why I'm interested in them. And um, maybe you guys can help. Maybe you guys could tag them and encourage them to come on and uh, encourage them to to get out of their comfort zone and and come on the show and be a part of something that we feel like is going to be pretty special so first up first up my my great friend alan johnson you know i know him by aj um aj and i right now our relationship's a little fractured i won't go into the details of of what's going on with with him and i but but life's too short life's too short we need to you know we're lifelong friends uh, you, you have very few 
lifelong friends in life. Um, you know, no matter where you go in life, you know, there's a certain set of a couple few people that, you know, you always lean on and you always gravitate back to. And, and AJ and I, you know, my relationship with him is, is pretty special. You know, he's always, he's always stood up for me. He's always kind of brought me along. He's, um, he's somebody that I'll always treasure as a friend and, like no matter how far we drift apart, that'll always be uh, a relationship in good light to me. So, AJ, uh, I encourage you to come and talk to me, and and let's let's hammer that out like we always have. Um, you know, I, I always prided our relationship being something that no matter how angry we got, and and no matter the arguments that we had that when it was over, it was over, and we were back to being friends. So um, so that's that's what I anticipate happening here eventually. So uh, just work through what you got to work through and call me when you need to call me, and let's talk about it. So um, next up is one of the most polarizing figures in politics here in the New River Valley right now. It's Marie March. Marie March is running for the seventh district state legislator in Virginia. She's the owner of Fatback Soul Shack and um, Do South Barbecue. And I can tell you, I love, uh, you know, I hadn't gone to Fatback ever until some of the things started happening with Marie. And I can tell you, man, I love Fatback. Like they offer a menu that um, isn't available anywhere else in town. At decent prices, great service, um, and Marie is just a genuine person, in my opinion. I fully support her, and um, I want to bring her on, and I want to help. I want to help engage the community uh, with what she's going to do and help us achieve in the New River Valley. and And I feel like she's a special person. So she's she gets she gets that standard rap in my opinion of a conservative lady, um, you know, and what comes with that, what what the media talking points are about her that are completely ridiculous and false. And I want to open up, I want I want to help her open up to the community here, and let them hear her talk, and and uh, maybe get get her influence to some people that might not hear have ever heard from her or just heard about her or gotten some misinformation about her. And, um, so I'm really, really excited to possibly have her on. I don't know that she'd be willing to go live with us, but we can, we can do a special edition with Marie. So Marie, please consider coming on and work with my team and, and, and schedule something. We would certainly do a special edition of putting you in your place, uh, for, for anybody really running for office, but especially somebody, uh, with Marie's story and what she's been able to accomplish and and what she was able to overcome in the primary that happened um you know just a maybe a, maybe a month ago like she she blew away you know she was not the odds on favorite going in and she she dominated so I think that's a a compelling story and and we would love to have that on here so Marie please consider coming on and um and you know I think it'll be good for everybody here so next up a guy that's really special to me, that's influenced me in a tremendous way. Um, pretty much my business, you know, my business dad, you know, the guy that kind of showed me the ropes um, when I first started working, when I first got into, you know, business, or uh, imp my first employed, uh, my first job as an employee. Um, it was Steve Prater at Blacksburg Country Club. And, you know, I pretty much give him legend status. You know, I've, I I I feel like he's he's influenced the community in such a way. He's he's helped people uh, use the game of golf to 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 better their life. You know, he sent he sent kids to college. He's he's helped a guy like me. He's trained a guy like me and others like me to to know how to to know how to live life and and some you know, some outlooks on life. And he's just, he's just trained a lot of people, a lot of kids into being great adults, in my opinion. 
and the the amount of history he knows, the amount of experience he has, and his story in the golf business is is a good one in my in my opinion and in my heart. I just want to let people know more about him and have him come and just talk with me for me. You know, I just want I just want an hour of his time to to come and have this documented with me and him and talk about my history with him and and really get deep into, you know, his journey too because, you know, he's trained a Blacksburg legend uh that's on the PGA Tour now, Lonto Griffin. You know, Lonto is a friend of mine. Um, you know, we kind of grew up together. We had some of the same the same uh interests and um you know now he's on the pga tour he's ranked in the top 60 he's uh he's got a great opportunity in front of him and i would like to bring more awareness to that opportunity um you know i know he's got a big team and 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 he's you know he's like i said top 60 in the world playing golf he's made uh you know a million and a half dollars in income in this season alone like I know he's real busy, but but I I would love the opportunity to sit down with Lonto and have him on the podcast. So anybody with any influence uh, there that can, you know, let Lonto know that we would like a little bit of his time. Um, you know, I don't, um, I'm not super connected with him at the moment. Obviously, uh, you know, you have to make decisions and you drift away, and you know he's super busy. So anybody, Steve, you help us out there, get Lonto on the show. Uh, we really appreciate that. Um, one of the most compelling local stories uh, in a long time was um, another highly influential person in my life. His name was Brian Kitts. He was the he was the former Blacksburg High School principal. He his role in my life was um, Christiansburg High School golf coach, and then I I kind of tugged along, you know, or kind of rode his coattails into helping him with the Christiansburg High School golf team after I was done in high school. So his story is an amazing story just because it's very um, – it, it's a, it's still painful for the community. You know, the way that he exited Blacksburg High School, I would love to have that on. I would love to pretty much just catch up with Brian and, and talk about how his life has evolved and – and what his feelings were in the moment, you know, his feelings, his feelings of being treated the way that he was treated, I think would be compelling, a very compelling story. So Brian, if you catch wind of this, we want you on the show. Uh, let us know if you're available, if you'd be willing to do that. I think it would be, I think it would be uh must see TV. <laughs> um, and then we got Darius Nichols, Darius has uh, the abil- or the opportunity to come back and work as a bas- as the head basketball coach at Rafford University. So so Rafford's son gets to return home to do the thing that he's passionate about at the at a really high level. You know, like Rafford University here, the head basketball coach, that's a big job. I think that's a big opportunity. You know, you win the Big South tournament and you're in the you're in the big dance. I mean, you're in the you're in the. You, I mean, you know, you're a low seed there. But I mean, I would like to know what he feels like is possible from a small school like Radford University. I mean, you know, I hope that he can ride this out for a long term. I hope I hope this isn't a stepping stone. I hope I hope that he can develop a program that he's he's going to make an impact to the community with now that he's gone full circle. And I would just love to talk to him about that and his passion and, and his, his obsession with it to stay at it, to be, to be where he is now. Cause that's what it takes. It's obviously an obsession. And now he's got a chance to come home and do what he loves to do in his backyard. That's a great story. So anybody connected with Darius that can, that can encourage him to come on. We would love to, Love to have him on the show and talk to him about that. Next up, um, you know, I've got I've got some clients that mean uh, a whole lot to me. You know, the the relationships I've developed with certain people are, you know, I feel like are lifelong. You know, they they come. Some people come and go. Some people 
stick around and they, they highly influence you and they, they make a huge impact. And, uh, Brandon and Ashley Crawford, you know, just watching their relationship, watching them raise two girls, watching Brandon be obsessed over his, his school. You know, he's, He's, he's going into biology. He's going to be like the local Steve Irwin. You know, he's going to be like this animal guy, and he's, he's, he's into bodybuilding, and he's, like, really competitive. And, you know, his obsessive nature over it is, is, has influenced me, has, has touched me to see what you have to be to be successful. And, like, he's going to be successful on everything that he points himself to because he is that – he is that into, he's that obsessed about. Like, you know, he'll admit, I think, that he's not the smartest guy in the room, but he goes and he did that biology degree and he's at the top of his class. And it's only because of his obsessive nature and the passion that he puts behind it. And I think that's a great, compelling story too. And I just want to help them build their brands. They both they both want to build social media brands and we're we're going to be the infrastructure here in the community hopefully to try to do that for people so so having them on getting them out of their comfort zone because they they both um they they're both kind of introverts they're both they don't they don't exude like hey come talk to me type personalities but they also want to develop personal brands and and have a big social media influence so so I got to get them out of their comfort zone so I want to get them on the podcast to kind of start having them feel the pressure uh, we you know every time we line a guest up and they're not used to it we we feel them fidgeting we feel them we feel them getting out of their comfort zone and and getting nervous and and things like that happens to me you know that happened to me before this show you know it's just one of those things you got to go through to to do this I mean this is very nerve-wracking or can be so we just want to get as many people that have these goals out of their comfort zone to know that all you have to do is just get started um you know the quantity will kind of drive the quality you got to just keep doing it keep learning keep growing so Brandon Ashley you know um, I asked Brandon to be on today to fill this spot. He never got back to me. I, I really feel that hesitation from the community and these people that have these goals. And I just want to be uh, a source of inspiration and and know that it's not. there's nothing to be afraid of. There's nothing to be afraid of here. So, um, Ashley, Brandon, consider coming on at some point. Um, you know, you, you guys are really important to me and, and having you guys be able to achieve your goals – is something that I'm invested in. So just know that. Um, next up is our our um, our Congressman Morgan Griffith. Obviously, um, this guy has a lot of influence, and he is crafting the laws that affect us. And he would just be a dream interview. You know, a guy that a guy that has um, the ability to you know influence the laws that we live by. Like we all need to engage with this guy. So he would just be a dream, a dream interview for me, you know, as a, as an interviewer, you gotta, you gotta talk to the people that are influencing things that are, that are crafting the way that we live our life that are influencing the culture in the way that these lawmakers do. So, um, Morgan Griffith would love to have you on if you ever see the opportunity or, you know, can bless us with that opportunity. That'd be great. Um, Justin Ward, I'm not sure if you guys remember Justin Ward. Justin Ward was a newscaster. Um, he was a, a news reporter for WDBJ7, and um, he is now working for Radford University. I would love to just know, you know, the progression of, of what he's doing now and, and kind of reminisce on some news stories and some things that he was able to accomplish while he was there and kind of what he's up to and what his ambitions, uh, his ambitions are. Um, and, and what he's working on over at Radford University. And we would like some some free uh, counseling, you know, some free consultation there because, you know, you being in the media space, uh, you know, we might be able to work with, like, internships and, and trying, to find, trying to find ways to utilize what you're doing and help us at the same time uh, with the people that are coming through that program or whatever it is that you're doing. So... Uh, Justin, if you if you get wind of this, uh, you know I've sent you a message on Facebook to see if you'd like to be a part of it. 
Um, so let us know if we can get some time uh, from you. Um, we would love the opportunity to interview you. I mean, that guy's, that guy's uh, interviewed Joe Biden. So, like, it would be cool to interview a guy that's interviewed somebody like that. So, um, even though we're not – we're clearly not fans of him, but uh, that's, that's a pretty big interview. Um, um, next up, this is, this is something uh, I'm really interested in. This is a nine-year-old kid in Pulaski that I'm branding. I'm branding this kid the next J.J. – Reddick of Southwest Virginia. I'm I'm putting it into reality. Braden Grubb, he's the son of of uh, Jason Grubb. He's an educator and a and a coach down in Pulaski. If you're in basketball or in soccer, you probably know Jason. Um, you know th they run around to you know Montgomery County, Pulaski County. Braden is in a lot of different teams and a, a lot of different leagues. So you probably know who I'm talking about, but I want to get this kid in here and I want to help him understand what's kind of about to happen in his life and, and try to influence him and, and trying to help Jason as well with social media um, strategies because, you know, the Le LeVar Ball strategy is legit. I mean, you know, the attention he was able to get for his sons and the direction that he had because of the knowledge that he had is it's the same thing with Jason. Jason has a lot of basketball knowledge. He has played basketball at at a decent level and he you know, he's a big guy. He's like six three, you know, back in his prime was fast. Like if Braden does anything, if he maps anything like Jason, with Jason's guidance, then Braden will be anything Braden wants to be, if he can dodge the things that come at you during life, you know, if he can dodge injury, if he can dodge relationships that are toxic, uh, Braden could be the next JJ of Southwest Virginia, in my opinion. Uh, next up is a guy from the New River Valley. He lives down in Pulaski. He has got over 80,000 followers on TikTok, and his content is amazing. His name's Reggie Grubb. And I want to bring his profile up because I want people to go to TikTok and follow this guy. This this is a very special guy, in my opinion. Uh, somebody that I can have uh, real world conversations with, uh, kind of like kind of like Derek. Uh, you know, even though Derek is a comedian, this this uh, gentleman is um, what he uh, calls a light worker. So like he's very spiritual. He he puts out positivity. He puts out what his truth is. He's very inspirational to me, and I want. I want you guys to see his latest post on TikTok. Maybe we'll go down through a couple of his things, but you guys need to find Reggie Grubb on TikTok and any other social media that you can find him on and just just dive into what he's doing, engage with him, and support him. Local guy from the New River Valley. Um, let's bring that up real quick. Perfect. Trying to work through the uh, the delay here, guys. Hang tight, because I this is very important. Because we'll have we'll have Reggie on here as soon as we can coordinate after our break. Hey there, listen. You know the thing you're wanting God to manifest in your life is close when you survive the hardship. You like the phoenix rising out of the ashes. Even the world agrees with me. You, this old version of you had to disappear. It had to burn down. So this new version of your life could come back and be like, bam, I'm here. Let's go get it. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Don't let this hardship get the best of you. Let's go. Oh, I'm so hyped this morning. I'm so hyped. <laughs> hey, don't give up on your dreams. Your blessings are still on the way. You know, it's kind of like, you know you're gonna bless a kid with a car, but you don't give the keys to it when it's five years old. A blessing too soon could be too much of a burden. Listen, you know the thing that you're wanting God to manifest in your life is close when things seem to just uncommonly fall in place in your face. There's that's no- good. So that's Reggie. 
Uh, we're going to get Reggie on. Go find Reggie on TikTok. Over 80,000 people follow this guy on TikTok. Um, that's pretty impressive. I mean, we're trying hard, but this guy's doing it. And I'd like to just know how he's been able to accomplish that and and just get just get him in the office here ready to, you know, further his reach and and get his word out get his word out a little bit further. Um so next up, next up we have um a guy that was a hopeful um in the 12th district to run against Chris Hurst. His name is Jody Piles and um the the 12th district GOP did something to where they just four people were able to make the decision on who the candidate was. The vote never went to the people. And and um you know no matter no matter what the situation is, I don't know that that's right. You know, like we we definitely need that seat to go to uh the conservative candidate in this situation, you know, the the GOP candidate. But the way that the GOP candidate got there needs to be evaluated. And Jody's story needs to be needs to be brought to light. You know, he he needs to be able to sit across from me and and tell his story and and whoever whoever had made these decisions, whoever was empowered to make these decisions really needs to be considered to not be in power anymore in my opinion. So, we need to talk about that. We need that story to come out. The the New River Valley, the 12th district needs to know that story. And and um I just keep I say this probably once a week. People are asleep. People are asleep. People people don't know what's going on around them. And then all of a sudden when it when it changes and they have no idea why it changed or how it changed, well it's because you were asleep. It's because you're not engaged in what's going on in your community. So, you know, we're hoping that this platform with these guests are going to wake people up to to understand what they need to be engaged with and what they need to care about. So uh, we need to get Jody in. Jody, um, we're going to be in touch to get you on a on a spot here um, when we come back from break. Um, so, so, so that's like my specific dream list there. You know, now now a little bit broader, a little bit broader. Um, we can go with. Uh, anyone from my graduating class of Christiansburg High School, I, I would love to get anybody in here that graduated in my class, Christiansburg High School, 2001. Yeah, I'm 38 years old. It's 20 years. 20 years have gone by since I graduated high school. We're about to have our 20-year reunion in, in July. So anybody from Christiansburg High School, 2001, no matter where you are in the world, we can zoom you in. We can, we, if you want to be on the show and talk with me, we will line that up. We want that interview as well. We want to know what the people of 2001 are up to now. So engage with us. Let us know that you'd like to be on the show, and, uh, and we'll, we'll get you booked. And then also, anyone from the New River Valley that's running a business, that's doing business in the New River Valley, that's supporting – the New River Valley in that way, we need to get you in the show too. We need this is a platform to bring awareness around local businesses and local people making an impact and living a living a great life here in the New River Valley. So so book us, uh, you know, contact my team and um, and let's get you on the show because that's the most compelling stories for us is the people that are creating lives for themselves. That are that are expanding the tax base here, that are bringing value to our community. That's the most important. That you know, th- this list of twelve people is great, but but people actually live in great lives in the New River Valley. That's who we want to talk to the most. So um, so let let us know if you're willing to come on. Um, if you are those type, you know, 2001 Christiansburg class and New River Valley businesses that are doing business that are helping the community out here locally. Those are our ideal candidates. All right. So, um, so now we're going to transition into the show where, you know, over what, 48 shows now, 
Um, and and past things that we've tried, vlogs, rent to own content, you know, the other content that we've that we've shot out into the universe, you know, into the internet universe, um, you know, there's backlash to that. There's there's people that don't that don't gravitate toward our message. There's people that don't gravitate toward our message, but then get vocal about uh, the, the message. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take you through some of these comments. I'm gonna read the comments. We're putting them on the screen here for you to see. And then I'm just gonna kind of react to these comments and uh, and just kind of have a good time with it. Cause honestly, it's funny to me. Um, you know, th th I'll take you back to AJ. Like AJ and I would would argue in a way that it would never end. It it like he trained me perfectly for anybody that would want to bring up something that that they don't feel right that I say and and I know how to continue that conversation. I know how to be quick to the rebuttal. Like like my argument of my argumentative skills are superior uh, because of him, <laughs> you know, they they've been influenced by somebody that can that can keep jabbing even if he decides that he's wrong about the situation. He can he can he can kind of duck and go to a different situation that's semi relatable but on a different topic and keep the conversation going. So so um, like I don't shy away from argument. I don't shy away from I don't shy away from people being upset with me. I kind of go closer to that and I. I am ready to engage with you if you're upset with me, you know? I it's the people that get upset with me that don't want to engage with me, but then but then try to that you know, try to drop bombs but then don't want the rebuttal, don't want to have the conversation. So that those are the people I have the biggest issue with is the people that want to drop bombs but then when I when I come back at them, then they, you know, they scream, you know, they scream some sort of uh, you know, some sort of thing that's not relevant that has no bearing to the you know, they they want to come at me personally type thing you know they want to drop bombs on a on a subject but then come at me personally when I come back with an argument against their point so um it gets wild out here so let's go through okay so is this up on there so they can see it okay all right so this is actually a guy like threatening me to come beat me up <laughs> uh just so you guys on the, if you're listening to this and you're not seeing it and i'll read off uh, a portion of it he said dude i'll drive to seaberg right now what's up meet me somewhere like he wants me to he wants me he he wants me to meet him in the church parking lot so we can fist fight <laughs> this is wild man like this is what you get when you expose yourself to this type of thing, you know, when you're trying to achieve big things, when you're trying to achieve big things, this is kind of what can happen to you. And, and, um, so you have to be, you have to be really good at handling criticism. You have to, you have to have a good tolerance of people not liking what you're doing. So, so you no, know, this is not for the faint at heart pretty much. All right, go on to the next one. Okay, so this guy here messaged us off of a Facebook ad that we run. You know, we run a lot of Facebook ads for my real estate business, you know, and we pay a lot of money to put our ads on on the feed, you know. We run a lot of ad, we run a lot of ads. And a lot of the ad gives you most, if not like 90% of the information. Do you agree with that? Would you agree that our ad run is probably at least 90, 90, I mean, they get like 10 pictures and they get like this copy. They might not get the location of where the, the property is, but I mean, they get like 90% of like, if, if they're interested in this place enough to like want to find out where it is. Yeah. You, yeah. We give them like all these things. I mean, we give them, we give you everything, but maybe the actual property address. So we could possibly engage in a conversation with you. So that's the goal is we want you, we want you in the comment section saying, Hey man, where is this place at? Like, or click the link and find the information. You know, it's not that big of a deal. It's free, you know? And, and this guy, this guy's like, I don't like a post of yours. I was laughing at the stupidly ridiculous asking price. 
Do you always spam everyone that likes your post? If so, you're a greedy, common piece of, and then you can get the rest of it there. <laughs> so, so in my opinion, you're complaining about free content coming down your feed that you might actually be interested in. And, and instead of, instead of going into our funnel, you, you go into Zillow's funnel every day. Probably if you're looking for a house, you're on Zillow, you, you might request information and get four different agents trying to call you on my stuff. It's free on Facebook. You're already on Facebook way more than you are on Zillow. Most likely, um, you, you're clicking my link. It's me communicating with you. You're developing a relationship with me. You're not, you're not getting bombarded with Zillow spam and then spam from four different agents. You're just getting my content. I'm trying to be valuable to you. And because, because I put an ad there that limited every detail for you, you come and make comments to me about being greedy when I'm spending money to try to get you the information, I think that's a, a, I think that's a bit of a stretch in my opinion. You know, I am here to try to help, but I'm also here to eat. You know, I, I need to make money. I need to, I need to work. I need to get out here and provide value for my community. The only way I do that is earn money. So there's a fine line between, you know, perception of, of being greedy and needing, needing to earn money. So again, we're going to normalize, we're going to normalize people being ambitious and talking about the money that they want to make. That's, that's another goal of mine. So on to the next one. Okay. This was on TikTok. This was uh, what video was this? Oh, okay. This was Jimmy Mackin. This was me and Jimmy. Jimmy sent me a question for the one question show. And, um, you know, Jimmy was asking about the, um, when is the market going to crash? And I gave him, I gave him the, the general, I don't know that the market's going to crash, but the market certainly fluctuates and, and it goes up and down and it's way up right now. So it's probably in, in line for a down. And if you're not, if you're not positioned well and you don't have long-term goals with your real estate, you could be impacted. You, you are going to be at risk, uh, buying in at a peak. And if you got short-term needs of selling in two or three years, you might be in the Valley. You might be in the Valley. So, uh, that's exactly what I said in the video. And, and this guy comes back and says, dude, just say, I don't know. It's not that hard to say, don't beat around the bush. I'm giving you the exact answer you need to hear when I say after every peak, there's a valley and after every valley, there's a peak. So where are we in the, where are we in the cycle? We're in a peak. I said, there's probably a valley coming. How deep will that valley go? Only time will tell. I'm not Nostradamus. So, um, I can only hope that our economy is good enough. Our leaders are good enough to weather the storm if there is a storm coming, you know, but I'm, I'm getting prepared myself for a bit of a dip. You know, I'm getting, I'm getting prepared. I'm getting my investor client list together. I know that the, the, uh, the eviction moratoriums coming off. I know that there there's investors that are fearful that the 1031 tax exchange is going away there's going to be an influx of inventory at some point because people are going to want to move their money around. And I think, I think um, there's so much demand that it might, it might just become neutral. You know, it might, it might not dip too hard, but there might be, you know, there might be a flat line of value for a while. So it's hard to say, but you know, comments like this, I actually enjoy comments like this, uh, because it just gives me an opportunity to keep engaging and keep the content going. You know, negative comments don't bother me at all. I actually, I actually like the negatives just as good as the positives. Um, you know, it, it feels like to me when you get a reaction of any kind, when you get a reaction of any kind, it's better than no reaction at all. In my opinion, 
I would rather you say yes or no than than not not know that there was an option to say yes or no. So, like, I love these comments. Um, just as good as the, hey, I love the content comments. On to the next one. So, so let's play. Can we play the video? Can we play the video and then run the comment? That's a screenshot. Okay. Um, yeah, pull pull the TikTok up because this one this one uh, got decent views, and this was during the gas crisis. Um, you know, this was a shot at our president. You know, and that's going to be controversial. You know, I'm not a I'm not a Joe Biden fan. You know, and it doesn't mean it doesn't mean I'm a fan of anybody else other than I'm just not a Joe Biden fan. You know. So pretty much I was in the gas line at the gas station um, that I go to on a regular basis. You know, I go to a BP gas station in Christiansburg, you know, to get, you know, what I feel like is uh, premium, you know, the, the premium brand gas because I have a premium brand car and that's what I've been recommended to use. So I'm sitting in line on a gas station that's never busy, that never has a line, and I took a shot at – Joe Biden saying, is this build back better? And, and pan around the pan around the gas station with lines that are two or three deep along the way with a trendy song I thought was fitting for the place. Um, so, so we got the comment, we got the comment from some troll. Um, if we can pull that up. We got the comment from a troll was like, well, how did Biden, how, how's that, how's this Biden's fault, you know, uh, or, or whatever. Let me see what it says here. I'll read it all. Let me find it here. It says, tell me what Biden had to do with this. Trump destabilized our cybersecurity and kissed Putin's ring, but yeah, blame Biden. Um, that's the one of the wildest things I see is is these rebuttals that that factor in that leaders don't matter. You know the people the people that are making our decisions absolutely matter. People people in these powerful positions, if if they think that they're compromised and they won't do anything, and and they're weak. And, and there's no consequences to their actions. That's when you get pipelines hacked and shut down. And that's when you open your own pipelines up and you benefit from the energy independence that you want as a country. And that's kind of what I've seen Russia do. They've, they've shut our pipelines down. They, shut, they, they hacked a pipeline. They open a pipeline up in Russia, it, it's just, it just feels to me, you know, and I, I base a lot of my, a lot of my opinions and, and things on like how I feel. I, I base things on the facts, the, the things that I see and the things that I feel and I form an opinion and it doesn't feel like the leadership in power now to me is strong enough to combat the things that are going on. I don't feel like this would be happening if we didn't have the people that were in charge in charge now. So that's my, that's my position on that particular thing. And we got into it. Um, you know, she took shots at me. I took shots at her. You know, this wasn't, this wasn't, uh, the positivity that I like to run with, but you know, when, when strangers come on and, and start talking like that, like I enjoy, I enjoy the battle sometimes. So we, we went back and forth. It's pretty entertaining in my opinion. So go check that out on TikTok If you'd like to see more, this is, this is talking about COVID cases from the same person. Uh, the same troll kind of hit me with like th on three different videos in my, in my, you know, um, I guess what would be boxed into conservative viewpoints. Um, you know, and she's she's trying to claim California was the 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 like litmus test of how to handle COVID. Which, like, if you're if you're mapping California's strategy around COVID, 
you're you're losing. Your 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 cases are high and everybody's locked down and nobody's making money and you're totally government dependent. And California is not the model. It's Florida. Florida, in my opinion, is the model here. So the comment was, um, I guess the video I was I was saying something about, um, you know, Virginia needed to open up or something like that. And and this was a video from a few months ago. Like this wasn't even a like a. She was going down through like my videos, like like my hit, like way down in 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 the deep. Uh, of my content and um you know she was giving me a hard time that you know virginia had ten thousand deaths due to covid uh well that's that's probably debatable and you know like you know ten thousand deaths like what were the underlying conditions like there's there's a lot of inflated numbers in my opinion on this topic and and her comments just seem uninformed but uh you know she's talking about you know, the numbers in September versus the numbers currently, um, you know, and obviously they have gone up, but, um, but still like 8, 8 million people in Virginia and 10,000 people have died. Like, I think that probably maps that probably maps to normal death rate in Virginia for that time period. Like if we go back and look at data, you know, and I, I encourage, I definitely encourage like people to make decisions based on data and facts and leave emotion out of it. No matter what's happened to you, no, no matter what trauma it came your way in your life, like are these the statistics that, that make you make decisions in how we live our lives? Do we live in fear or do we live, do we live free? Do we, do we have this ultimate government security or do individuals have the right to go do the things that they want in their life? I choose and will always choose freedom. I'm choosing freedom over security every single time. I am not a caged, I'm not a caged animal. I don't, I don't need you to feed me. I don't need you to put me on a leash and take me for a walk. I am free and I want to remain free and it seems like half of our half of our country wants to be dominated and wants to fear and wants the government and that'll never be me and i'll stand on that mountain alone if i have to and i'll i'll let you call me anything you want to call me but it's uh that's my truth and that's what i'm always going to be fighting for all right next okay so Going back into what is this two seven months ago? This is a this is a video we created um, in 2018. It was um, on the this guy that we look up to. His name's uh, Meet Kevin. Is his YouTube name? He's actually running for governor of California, and I think he'd probably do a pretty good job. Um, we we said, we got a video out. Uh, with him, he was, he was hacking YouTube by exposing other YouTube influencers, like, uh, his real claim to fame, uh, before he really, really took off with like all this financial advice that he's given was he, his battle with Grant Cardone, meet Kevin versus Grant Cardone was kind of his stick for a really long time. And like, like trying to expose Grant as, what you know, not being honest and upfront and forthright to all of his following. So that's kind of like where we kind of got into the mix because we were Grant Cardone follower. Like we still we still appreciate Grant Cardone in ways and uh we, we appreciate Meet Kevin in ways and and we did a video um like trying to hack his strategy and we called it, it we exposed Meet Kevin. And and that's probably our most disliked video, most watched video that we have. So if you want to check that out, go to YouTube. It's it it's really just like the title is kind of um, what's the, what's the word uh, clickbait? It, yeah, we just clickbaited you. Like and 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 we have a lot of people in the comments giving us a hard time about clickbaiting them, and that's fair. That's fair. And and uh, so we've run through some comments here. Um, this guy says scam, waste of time. 
And, you know, we come back at him with, you know, this was like two years. We've gotten better. Thanks for the comment. This video still gets views and it's still, it's still pumping watch time for us. So, uh, with comments, you know, we just get that, that extra bump. So it's really helping us. And what do we got next? Okay. So this was, this was, uh, a video that still ranks our number one watch video probably today is, uh, a Facebook live rant that I put out that we repurposed, uh, for YouTube. And it's, uh, it's a warning about rent to own deals being a scam. And this, this lady says rent to own is not a scam. This video is not good advice. It's a really great opportunity for those who can't buy outright. Come on. So I, re I my rebuttal to that is the majority of people that get into these deals do not execute on a closing. They get charged far too much money for the rent and they get charged far too much money as a security deposit down payment and, and they never close the deal and they lose all that money. And, in today's time, anybody that wants to sell their house that's offering a rent to own probably has something wrong with the house that the open market won't consider. So, so like, you know, in my, my biggest rebuttal, my biggest rebuttal is stuff like this, you know, platinum, platinum club, third in the state of Virginia. Look, platinum club is income over 250,000 not exceeding 500,000. So we we've we've had um, a lot of sales volume success. This year this year we ranked 3rd in Virginia. Remax Remax does rankings and track sales volume and unit volume. I am 3rd in the state of Virginia with Remax in units in, in the New River Valley. So that's a little bit about who I am. You know, when when people come at me with that's not good advice, that's not I mean, I don't get to where I am. I don't get to where I am giving bad advice. You know, I'm looking out for my consumer to tell them that rent to own is not in their favor unless it is skewing heavily in their favor. So unless they've got a real strategy, but but most people sign their life away for something that they want, something that they're being overcharged for and something that's not in their in their best interest. They're being they're being used and abused and and these predatory practices are 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 going at them to take more of their money than even necessary. So again, Platinum Club and and I got my 2020 one coming. You know, and I can claim I can claim four time platinum uh, real estate agent. You know, uh, you hear that in the music industry. Well, you know, I am a four time back to back to back to back platinum selling real estate agent. <laughs> so, um, you know, and this one right here, you know, like I'm pissed. I'm not first. Like we're gonna go we're gonna go get first in units sold um, here soon, if not this year. Uh, like we're gunning for that. So, um, you know, you can't do, you can't do that given bad advice. So a little bit more about who I am and what I've accomplished, uh, there with, you know, this real estate thing. What you got next? Okay. Yeah. This is, this one's good too. Someone commented, uh, you are a effing fraud, dude. <laughs> so like this is on the uh the meet Kevin thing too, right? So I so he didn't he didn't appreciate getting getting clickbaited. Uh this wasn't this wasn't necessarily on a um on a real estate topic. This was just this was just me clickbaiting them into a video I wanted them to watch that they thought they thought, you know, their boy Meet Kevin was was doing some nefarious things. So um so they were they were a little upset with me on that, but I did do a video saying meet Kevin explained, and I tried to I tried to you know give them the hey this is what we were trying to accomplish, and you know we've learned from the experience type thing. So you know that was a great learning experience from us. Like we don't necessarily want to quit 
like clickbait you to death, but like we we're trying to get attention. I'm not going to be shy about it. We are trying to get attention from people on these platforms. So I'm not I'm not ashamed of that. I'm not I'm not. Uh, it doesn't bother me that we do that and we're going to do that in situations that we know people are interested in. So we're just not going to be, we're just not going to be like obnoxious about it because that was clickbait that had nothing to like two minutes of the video was something about meet Kevin. It wasn't a whole video about it. And like we've learned from that. So uh, bear with us as we get better still. Okay, so this is another this is another thing on the rent to own, um, kind of giving me a hard time, um, saying this man gives no facts, and all based on his advice is fear factor. Talk to him first. I wouldn't based on his lack of knowledge. Okay, lack of knowledge. Let's see. Uh, Remax Remax Hall of Fame. Lack of knowledge. You know, Remax Hall of Fame is um, a sales volume. Uh, uh, actually a GCI goal. So this, this Remax Hall of Fame has, has me earning over a million dollars in gross income with the company. So, you know, these comments, um, you know, gives no facts on rent to own. Like I'm given plenty of facts that the majority of the people that get into rent to own deals get taken advantage of. That is a fact and I'll never not say that. So it, somebody's taking advantage of somebody in that rent-to-own agreement. It's either the buyer taking advantage of the seller because the buyer gets an opportunity they wouldn't, they wouldn't get, and they, they've got something over on them, or the seller's getting on them because they're charging them too much and they're getting too much of a deposit. So I'll defend, I'll defend my experience in real estate to anybody. I am an expert in real estate sales. Like, you know, hundreds and hundreds of transactions deep, tens of thousands of hours dedicated to this. Like, there's not many people going to be out debating me on real estate sales and, and what, what is a fair deal and what's not a fair deal. That's it. All right. Well, I think that's a pretty good hour. I'm, I'm, I'm proud of myself for sitting here talking to myself for an hour. <laughs> so... Um, that was a pretty good rainy day thing. Uh, it, that's entertaining for me. I think there's a lot of great micro content. Like this might not have been a show that a lot of people stuck around to watch, but the micro content, the micro content of this is probably going to be pretty good. So, um, and, and we are, we are rolling out a lot more of our strategy and a lot more consistency. So, um, you know, these clips that we're rolling out, this TikTok stuff, we want you guys to like, you know, engage with us on the one question show. We need questions for the one question show, please. It's just a 10 second, whatever's on your mind, like anything. It doesn't have to be real estate. Just any question you have for me, you, you can talk to me about what I post. You can talk to me about how I feel and think about things. Send me questions that you have for the one question show, because I think that's going to be pretty entertaining. And, um, I think that's going to be just another thing we can layer on top of what we're doing. So again, uh, appreciate your support. We're going to wrap it up for today. That's episode 48. Next week, we've got J.H. Bards, a local, uh, a local, what is it, a whiskey company, like a spirits brewing. Brew, I mean, they're, they're, they have a lot of different products. So, you know, this being a local uh, business show that dude, I am super pumped for JH Bards. Like tune in for that and, and be ready to like, like understand further about their product and, and where you can find it and things like that. Um, and then our 50th show, the 50th show that, uh, we're going to do, uh, before our break, uh, is going to be with, um, our broker again, Amy Hudson's going to be on the show for our 50th. And, um, then we'll, we'll be on break for a couple weeks, but again, guys and gals, I appreciate the attention you're giving us, the, the engagement, uh, the view time, like everything that you're doing, uh, the people that have come on the show thus far, uh, Love you guys, and I really appreciate it. And I guess uh, until next week, we'll see you then.